Hi, and welcome to Crash Course Cryptozoology. Recently, there was a major breakthrough in the study of our species. For the first time since arguably 2005, scientists have discovered a new human ancestor that breaks the mold of what we believed our past to be. I'm referring, of course, to the now viral Homo luzonesis find. In this video, as I'm sure all of you can guess, I want to discuss pygmy people in relation to a Sumatran legend called the Orang Pendek. And I want to discuss why it's significant to the story of the Orang Pendek as a cryptid. But it might not be for the reasons that many of you would think it would be. Because I wouldn't say that it's significant to the Orang Pendek because the Orang Pendek is a story of a short primate in close proximity. Before I explain why it's significant in a different fashion, I want to explain why it's not significant in that fashion. For those of you who may not have heard about the find, since 2007, scientists have been studying strange remains on the island of Luzon in the Philippines, which is in close proximity to the Indonesian islands, and only recently have they come to very startling conclusions on the finds. They announced a whole new species of human could officially be classified by the findings, and the fossils suggest that very much like only one other species of human that we were aware of, that Homo luzonesis grew only to about three to four feet in height. In fact, most estimates put it at much, much smaller than that. Although this is a very new find and undoubtedly revolutionary, it isn't the first of its kind. In 2005, another breakthrough of a very similar fashion was found on the island of Flores in Indonesia, not very far from Luzon. The species discovered there is known as Homo floresiensis, aka the hobbit. The hobbit was the first of its kind to be defined as a branch of humanity that seemed to grow under the conditions of island dwarfism. Very basically speaking, the shrinking of a species due to a very limited land mass. Undoubtedly, these two species, now being known to exist, must have some correlation with each other due to their proximity. But they may also have a correlation with a cryptid, the Orang Pendek. With a name meaning, approximately, the short man of the woods, the Orang Pendek is native mostly to Sumatra as a reported cryptid. Both natives and visitors to the islands there speak about the short little primate-like animals that are seen roaming around the forests, mostly described as being very short, just about three feet in height, maybe under, with red hair covering their whole body. Many have likened it to a short version of Sasquatch, if you will. Now, many of you may say that the new findings are significant to the Orang Pendek story because the Orang Pendek is a short human-like primate described within the same vicinity as the confirmed to exist Homo floresiensis and Homo luzonesis. However, I'd like to make the argument that it's not, and here's why. It's important to note that Sumatra and Indonesia and the Philippines in general are not the only places in the world that have stories of little short men in the woods. In fact, this can be found on almost every continent in the world. From Iceland's elves to even North America's puckwudgies, there are stories of these things all over the place. The question is, why is the Orang Pendek any different? Is it because we're finding these things in close proximity, these real humans that did exist? The Orang Pendek, considering the fact that there are other global stories of short people with no evidence to back them up, at least physically speaking, there is physical evidence for the Orang Pendek. There have been tracks cataloged, handprints cataloged, and debatably hair samples that have come and gone in the past years. The point being, other examples of short, hairy, man-like cryptids, like the Pukwudgie or the Iceland Elves, are mostly only known through legends by natives and anecdotal evidence by eyewitnesses, both of which can be significant, but nowhere near as significant as physical evidence. The Orang Pendek is not significant because it's a story of a short, humanoid primate when we know that those did exist. It's significant because there is proof in the same vicinity that such creatures did exist, and there is currently evidence in the same vicinity still being collected, recent evidence, that suggests that some form or another of that species still may exist. The Orang Pendek is significant to these finds, not because it's similar in concept, but because it is similar in concept and also supported by physical evidence. I think it's important to understand this because... A lot of times, people can fall into this fallacy of thinking that just because something is described similarly, it must match up. Something like 
the Loch Ness Monsters, for example, which is still a very perplexing case, don't get me wrong, and I will do a whole video on this point, don't relate to plesiosaurs because there is physical evidence, geographically speaking, to suggest that they could not be plesiosaurs. A lot of people still put stock into the idea that they would be plesiosaurs, and it's just simply impossible. So don't fall into the trap of categorizing these things in an ideological manner to get similarities. The Orang Pendek right now is still providing really good reasons to go looking for it. That being said, until next time.